halo physics. The halo ring, or also known as the halo array. This is a scientific video by Anthony Todd of Engineering Futures. Let's get going. In the very popular video game, Halo, the entire game is played upon the what's called the Halo Ring, or the actual Halo Array, or the Array. Now, the Halo Ring you can see here on the right is literally a big round, or I should say ring-shaped um, sort of station, and it actually has continents and things on the inside of it. And the player is jumping around this, um, you know, as if they were playing on Earth. There's some complicated physics that's going in, so let's take a look at that. Now, the Halo Ring, if you can actually see it here from a screenshot from an actual video game, is a ring-like ship, and it does have a, of a diameter, if you actually read the lore, of right around 10,000 kilometers. That is approximately 6,250 miles. The diameter of Earth, so our home planet, is right around 7,915 miles. So putting that into perspective, the halo array is just a little bit smaller than the actual diameter of our own planet Earth. So this thing is really, really big. Now, if you've ever played Halo, um, you know that there's some interesting things, and let's talk about that. When you're playing on Halo, as you can see here, this is from a famous map, Blood Gulch. This is where me and the boys grew up back in the day. So if you're 30-something, you know this map. You know that this Halo ring, so this ring system that we have here, um, you actually play on the outer edge of the ring. And what's cool is you actually feel like you're on planet, or it has its own actual artificial gravity. So it has its own gravity. And, you know, the guy from Game Theorist, Matt Pack. So the game theorist guy, so game theory, he actually did a video where he calculated the actual gravitational acceleration of the halo ring. And he actually calculated it using pixel measurements that's approximately 15 meters per second squared. Now remember, every celestial object actually has its own gravitational acceleration or gravitational pull. You feel this all the time on planet Earth. Earth's gravitational acceleration is right around approximately 10 meters per second squared. So this halo ring is generating its own gravity, and it's roughly, you know, um, a little bit larger than planet Earth's, okay? So the question is, how does this do this? How does this happen? How can you be standing on the side of a ring right here, and you're playing in this realm in this video game, but yet you feel like you're playing on flat ground. But even though you know the ship itself is actually round, you can actually see in the video here or in, a, or in a ring shape. Well, the answer to that is the next thing, and that is artificial gravity. This is a very, very important thing for space travel and something Elon Musk is definitely looking into. Now, as we see here, this is artificial gravity. This is a famous uh, scene from 2001 Space Odyssey. So 2001 Space Odyssey. This is where a person moving in a circle, um, NASA has found out, and we even do this on the ISS, that when you have an object that's moving in a circle, so it has an angular velocity, a person moving on the outer edge of it um, is not actually moving in a straight line. Now, they do have what's called a tangential velocity, but they're still moving about this circle. Now, so when the person is moving about a circle, this is actually what we call a uniform circular motion. So when you're moving around a circle at a constant tangential velocity, so remember, tangential velocity just means how fast the person is going tangent to their circular path or to a curve, as we see here, um, this actually causes a new acceleration. Now remember, an acceleration, teach my kids in my physics class, is a change in velocity over a change in time. So a lot of people think that, oh, only speeding up and slowing down can cause an acceleration. Well, that's not 100% true. Um, yes, that does cause an acceleration, but that's not the only way. A change in direction causes it as well. So a change in direction can cause an acceleration. 
And we actually have a name for this acceleration. Um, it's called centripetal acceleration. Also known as centripetal produces a centripetal force. And it's actually the acceleration in a circle or centripetal acceleration is actually equal to V squared over R. So you can actually see here from this drawing that, you know, this person is, you know, moving around this circular path like this guy right here. Um, even though they're moving at a constant speed, so their velocity is constant, the direction of that velocity is changing. And this is causing our centripetal acceleration. So that's kind of still only answers half the question. So how are they able to be pinned to the side of this? So let's take a look at that. The best way to describe this to you is if you've ever ridden a roller coaster. Now here's a roller coaster and I've drawn, I've drawn the loop-de-loop. -loop. And the loop-de-loop -loop's pretty cool. So example, whenever you're moving about a circular path, you feel different forces throughout the loop-de-loop. -loop. And these forces, example, if you go to Dollywood or you go to Disneyland or something of that nature, you're feeling these forces. And that force is called a centripetal force and it's always directed towards the center of a circle. Now let me remember, centripetal force is not real. It's not a real force. It's called a false force. So example, whenever you move in a circle, um, something has to cause it, okay? So it's a false force. Something must cause a centripetal force or you to, to appear that centripetal force. Um, we'll put, you know, centripetal force right here. And tripetal, so something has to cause it. And a perfect example is this example. As you're going around this circle in your cart here on the roller coaster, well, what is causing you to keep moving in a circle? And the easy thing I ask my physics students is, well, what is holding you on? And what's interesting is the actual surface or the track in this case is actually producing a normal force. It's producing a normal force because a normal force is just any force that opposes the surface. And since you do have a surface on the side of a track, an example, your inertia, remember, your body wants to keep going tangentially. It doesn't want to check. Remember Newton's first law. So, and that is the law of inertia. So an object in motion will stay in motion, object at rest will stay at rest, unless acted upon by an external force. So this rail is actually acting as an external force, pushing the riders towards the center. And the same thing at the top. The rail is above you, so your normal force is pressing towards the center. And this center force is what we identify as a center-seeking centripetal force. Even though it's not real, and something must cause it, and in this case, the rail is causing our centripetal force. So it's kind of playing with our inertia and giving us that sense of a force. And remember, I teach my physics students, your normal force is what you feel. It's what you feel like. So when you're on a roller coaster and it says, hey, this thing will produce five Gs, that means your normal force will be five times what you would normally feel on planet Earth. So now that we understand that, we can now look at how the actual halo ring produces gravity. So the question is, how fast must the halo ring spin to produce 1.5 Gs or 15 meters per second squared of acceleration? Now, like I said Matt Pack some of Gang Theory did a great job with this, but he didn't really go into the math of telling you how this is possible. So let me show you how that works. So again, here you have your person on your halo ring. And again, here's the center of my circle. You know, kind of draw on the side of this. So you're standing over there on the edge, a little cr a cross section here. This whole diameter is 10,000. That means the actual radius of my halo ring is 5,000 kilometers. Or that is right at what? Um, let's see here. That's right at, like, right at 3,125 miles. We can actually do some cool math to figure out how fast it must be spinning. So let's do that. So what's cool is whenever you're spinning around in the circle like this, um, your own inertia causes you to have a centrifugal force, which also pushes on the halo ring, which causes a normal force. 
So if we feel like, remember, it's what we feel. We feel like we weigh 1.5 times Earth's gravity. So that's what you feel. And if you look, there's only one force that's acting upon us, and that's the actual surface. Remember, remove that section of the halo ring. You fly off tangentially in the space and don't come back. And we know Newton's second law, F equals ma. And we know the acceleration in a circle is v squared over r. Remember, that is your velocity tangential. Okay. So what that means is we can then plug it in. So we have this. Your Fn is your only force you have equals mv squared over r. And this is actually the equation for centripetal force. So, like again, we said we want to feel like we weigh 1.5 Gs. So we put that right here, 1.5 mass times gravity. That's how much we want to feel like on the halo ring. Equals mv squared all over r. We can actually rearrange this equation to solve for how fast the object's going. So notice the masses cancel out because even the scorpion tanks and, you know, Master Chief and all the, the soldiers... They have different masses, but they still feel the same gravity. You actually get this, 1.5 gravity times the radius equals V squared. So the square root of 1.5 times G times R equals V. So that will tell us how fast it has to be moving tangentially. And remember, this G is the gravity of Earth. We're trying to simulate 1.5 times Earth's gravity. So that is, remember, that's 10 meters per second squared. So let's do that. So the square root of 1.5 times 10 times the radius. Now, this radius has to be in meters. Remember, our radius was 5,000 kilometers. That is approximately, or that is exactly, 5 million meters because we want to get a velocity in meters per second. And that actually gives us a velocity tangential of 8,660 meters per second. That is approximately 19,500 miles per hour. So that is how fast the halo ring is actually spinning to produce 1.5 times Earth's gravity on the people of the halo ring. So that's pretty incredible. So that's kind of awesome how we can figure that out. So um, another thing we can look at too is, well, what is this angular velocity? So how long does it take the halo ring to make a rotation? So we're kind of drawing back. So let's look at this. So we know that the, the diameter, or say the radius, is 5 million meters. That's my radius R here. And I want to figure out how fast it's going angrily. So, for example, if I were to draw a dot on the side of this halo ring, we all know that it has a velocity tangential, and that velocity tangential is 8,660 meters per second, or roughly 19,500 miles per hour. That's very, very fast. So we can actually find the angular speed of it. So how fast is the whole ring rotating? So angular velocity, or velocity tangential, is equal to angular velocity, and they're related with the relationship of the ring. So remember, angular velocity is how fast an object is moving about a circle, whereas velocity tangential is how fast an object's moving in a straight line. Okay, so if we know our tangential velocity is 8,660 meters per second and we know our radius is 5 million meters, we can find our angular velocity. So we take 8,660 divided by 5 million. And that gives us 1.73 times 10 to the negative 3, and that's actually in what we call... Oops, That's radians per second. So that's pretty cool. And we know omega is a change in radians over a change in time. So if you want to figure out how long it takes the halo ring to make one complete rotation, well, it's just our change in radians divided by our omega. So in this case, we know one full rotation is 2 pi radians, and we know 1.73 times 10 to the... Oops. 1.73 times 10 to the negative 3 radians, we can actually find our time. So we take 2 pi divided by that. That gives us roughly 3,630 seconds.
And that's actually approximately, approximately one hour. So the halo ring is spinning extremely, extremely fast. So it only takes roughly one hour to complete one rotation of the halo ring. So I hope you enjoyed this video about some cool, cool, cool halo physics. Please subscribe um, to the channel. It really helps out. And there's a lot more great physics content on here. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and a like. And a comment in the uh, comment section that you like these video game physics. And I can do a lot more videos with this. Thank you. Have a great day.